So hi, hello and welcome, my crow hunter here and those little critters that you see behind me, their name is Varroa Destructor and uh, these are mites uh, which can be found on bees, so they're parasites of bees and uh, they can cause uh, quite a big uh, problem for beehives and it can even cause so-called beehive collapses when many of the bees die out. And this is of course a problem for the beekeeper. And uh, I got those mites from a student as a present here. <laughs> Look at this sheet of paper here. Um, this is actually, um, yeah, it contains many of those mites here. And in this video, I'd like uh, to show you a little bit how the mites actually found their way on this uh, paper here and uh, how I collected them and how I made a uh, microscope slides. And of course, I'd like to talk also a little bit about yeah, why those mites um, are a problem. Yeah, as I told you, it was a present. Uh, all of a sudden, one of my graduating students uh, came to me and she gave me this um, as a goodbye present. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, was a little bit surprised. Um, what could that be? And then she explained, yeah, these are varroa mites uh, that uh, they collected uh, from their beehives because uh, they are producing honey on a commercial basis and uh, they have to control those mites. And in order to assess how many mites there are in a beehive, um, you do a little assessment by collecting uh, these mites. And this is basically um, what they've done here. And uh, she's given it to me um, to make a YouTube video here. So these are the presents that I like, uh, uh, like a lot. And I have to tell you, it's probably one of the most unique and unusual presents uh, that I ever got. Um, before I show you how, to, how I made uh, those uh, uh, mite slides uh, for microscopy. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more generally about those, why they are a problem. And I found uh, those pictures here online. It's a public domain picture here. And you see that there are three of those mites on um, a, a bee pupa. And here this is an electron micrograph of, of a mite um, on a bee. And uh, here again, and what they do is, is uh, they bite uh, into the bee and they will suck um, and feed um, on the bee. And uh, this is not can not only weaken the bee, but uh, the mites are a problem because uh, they are also known to transmit bee viruses. So yeah, um, just like uh, humans can become ill from tick bites, uh, bees can also become ill and uh, they have, uh, again, their own yeah, assortment of different bee viruses that can actually cause um, a problem as well. So you see that uh, there are multiple issues of why it's important uh, to control um, mites uh, in a beehive. Yeah, um, I want to now also show you um, a little bit how those mites um, are collected. Um, I got those video clips uh, from my student, uh, so I, uh, she was kind enough uh, to make those videos here. And you can see that uh, you push uh, and pull in uh, this little board here. And on this board, what they put is they put a sticky foil and you leave it in there for a day. And um, after a day, when you take it out, uh, then you actually get that, uh, what I just showed you. And you can see a lot of debris. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, basically parts of bees, some honey maybe, or some, some wax, um, things basically that kind of fell down inside um, the beehive. And there were lots of particles here. And uh, also, of course, uh, some of the mites that fell down. Yeah, maybe some of them are dead, um, that could be, um, or some of them maybe are alive and fell down. And uh, then they can be collected. And uh, bee farmers, what they do is, is they will then count the number of mites to assess uh, how much um, yeah, of the beehive is actually, you know, how many of the mites are present in, in the beehive. So um, I also want to show you a little bit uh, over here, uh, the, uh, the place um, where uh, the beehive uh, can be found. Yeah. So you see here it is, um, and there are bees flying in and out of the beehive. But there's also another thing that I just want to show you um, over here. Um, just have to wait until the video starts again and reloops because there is something that you might um, not realize uh, if you just uh, watch the video superficially. Something very rare. I'm going to pause it over here. Okay, here. <laughs> what do you see? You see a meadow. Okay, um, they have become rare these days. Uh, it's a natural med meadow with a large biodiversity of different plants. And I think uh, one of the reasons why the number of bees um, also has been declining over the last couple of years is, is not only because of, of uh, the varroa mite um, and of uh, pesticides, but also because of uh, a change in agriculture. So we've got a lot of monocultures now these days um, and uh, there are very few natural um, yeah, meadows uh, left uh, for bees uh, actually to collect nectar. Are. And uh, so I think there are multiple factors that can, that can contribute uh, to um, yeah, a collapse of a bee colony. It's really important uh, to know that those bees are not only important for uh, making honey, but of course, uh, because uh, they are very important for pollinating. And uh, if uh, you don't have enough bees uh, for pollination, uh, then of course, you might not have uh, yeah, a very high crop yield when it's time for harvest. 
Yeah, I got um, I got this sheet. Um, yeah, this roll of paper um, over here. Okay, and uh, look, um, just by looking at it, um, I was already able to identify a few mites. Yeah, so it's not even necessary to use a microscope, but you can simply assess them simply by looking at it because those mites they look uh, yeah kind of oval and very regular in shape, uh, while all of the other parts um, over there that kind of fell down inside the beehive look very irregular. So, um, of course, um, I also wanted to use my little handheld microscope to do a first assessment here. This is a USB microscope. Um, actually, it's a little bit like a camera um, with a lens in front um, attached. So that's still without the microscope. It's just a regular macro uh, macro uh, video that I used uh, with my mobile phone. But then when you actually use uh, this uh, handheld uh, microscope, you're going to see that the magnification is quite a bit larger. It's also nice uh, to have a built-in LED for proper lighting. And uh, this is basically one of those mites. Look, and uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite magnified. Uh, because of the plastic foil, there are a few reflections, uh, which might be a little bit disturbing. But um, yeah, it's possible to see already that uh, those mites um, are quite abundant here. And of course, they're already all dead because uh, maybe sometimes uh, maybe they die off. Or as I'm going to show you later, sometimes the bees even are able to kill them by biting off their legs. Yeah, of the mites, and I've also found uh, yeah a wing um, of a bee um, on uh, on this foil, um, yeah, on this plastic foil, on the sticky plastic foil. Yeah, here we go again. Uh, I'm checking it again here, but um, essentially uh, I decided okay, um, I want to have a slightly better quality um, of images. So for this reason, I decided uh, to make permanent slides, and I carefully peeled off uh, this plastic uh, protective uh, yeah, yeah paper foil um, from the paper from the plastic foil router and I tried to pick up some of those mites using tweezers and look how difficult this is. <laughs> it immediately moved away and the reason is, is because of static electricity by removing this paper it was statically charged and it didn't really pick up uh, the mites so I dipped my tweezers into the mounting medium and it made it sticky and I was able to quickly and easily collect uh, those mites because they were now sticking uh, to the tip um, of my tweezers and then I could easily transfer the mite into the mounting medium. Now in this case I'm, I'm using Upro mounting medium uh, but um, yeah, if you just want to put it into water as if to make a, a temporary mount it's of course uh, also perfectly fine. I just wanted to experiment around again a little bit by using this Upro mount medium. It's very thick and syrupy so I had to press down the cover slip um, a little bit here. Yeah and here I <laughs> yeah, mounted I think four or five uh, of these uh, mites here again and I diluted uh, the mounting medium a little bit with alcohol to make it a little bit thinner and a little bit more liquid and fluid and uh, I was able to mount several of them and then you have to wait of course some time for, for it to dry. And here again yeah, I was peeling off uh, the paper and this kind of caused it to be charged up statically and that's why it was very difficult to pick up uh, the individual mites here. Yeah, um, under the microscope, uh, this is what I saw, dark field imaging, okay? Uh, you see of course uh, many white dots in the background, that's all dust. And um, this is how it looks like. This uh, I've been using the four times magnifying objective here. And uh, we see that those mites, they have many little hairs sticking out. Uh, it looks uh, quite nice. Uh, some ear bubbles, the round things are some ear bubbles here as well. And uh, quite, uh, quite nice uh, to see here. Um, but um, yeah, um, it's a little bit difficult uh, to see some details because the mites generally were kind of dark and very pigmented not very transparent um, and uh, this means that um, yeah, looking into the mite and seeing some of the more um, detailed structures was difficult. And you see that for example there where the legs are it's, it's kind of dark, other parts are much uh, brighter and the reason is is because I did not bleach uh, those uh, critters. Okay, Normally what you have to do is, is uh, when the, the, yeah, the insect or in this case the arachnid Mites are not insects, but the same applies to insects as well. When they're too dark, you have to bleach them and make the exoskeleton brighter so that more light is able to go through. Otherwise, they're going to be dark like this. And I didn't do that yet. So um, for comparison, I wanted to show you now a commercial slide of uh, the mite. And this is how a commercially prepared slide looks like. And they've bleached it. So you see it's much more transparent, uh, better in contrast. It looks much better. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do in the upcoming uh, days and, and weeks is I'm going to experiment around a little bit um, by preparing them in such a way that they become a little bit more transparent. So um, you can do that by placing them into potassium hydroxide solution, for example, or I've also read that uh, also lactic acid is able to bleach them. 
So I'll be experimenting around a little bit and then I'll make another video here. But in any case, um, yeah, you will see the comparison right now. Now, I did a when I did a little bit of research for this video, I found, so I found something quite interesting. I just want to share you um, again two pictures um, that are found online here. Uh, this here is an electron micrograph of a, of a mite, and you can see that it has eight legs. The, the first leg pair in front um, is kind of our sense organs, and here the legs are bitten off. The bees have bitten off the legs of, of, of this mite. Okay, so the bees have evidently are able to defend themselves against those mites um, as well, but kind of mutilating them, yeah, and biting off the legs, and then they fall down, and uh, that's how they kind of uh, fight them off. And um, when doing research, I found indeed a publication that mentioned that a significant part of the mites, a significant proportion of those mites that they found by with the collection method that I just showed you, um, actually were quite um, yeah, damaged because the bees were trying to fight them off. And I think that's a very interesting um, thing. Uh, evidently, bees do have a, a natural response uh, to fight off those mites. And maybe um, there is the possibility to do a little bit of a study to determine what factors, what environmental factors actually yeah, help the bees in fighting off those mites. Is this kind of temperature dependent? Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, maybe by counting uh, the number of mites that actually don't have any legs, um, maybe this helps you a little bit also yeah, determine some correlating factors that uh, yeah, kind of show which factors, environmental factors, factors like temperature maybe or humidity, maybe there are certain factors that help bees more to fight off uh, those mites. Okay, yeah, just some some ideas here. Do leave your comments, please, if you um, if you have also some ideas here. Well, yeah, uh, so this is basically back again uh, where we were. Um, the images that I uh, I made using using my microscope here, using dark field. Uh, dark field uh, microscopy here. Um, yeah, those varroa mites are quite fascinating. Unfortunately, a big problem for those people who keep bees. Um, do leave your comments behind. Um, I think uh, for today, uh, that's all that I want to yeah, show you. Um, but uh, it's probably not going to be the last time that uh, I will talk about those mites because I still have a lot of them left here on this on, on this uh, sheet here. Um, so plenty of more opportun opportunities uh, for experimentation. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I said, um, yeah, I would like to thank my student who's uh, provided me with those mites. Thank you very much. And also thank you for giving me the permission to use your videos. Uh, and uh, for today, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.